Okay, good morning again, everyone. So for those who uh, who didn't catch it, uh, before the start of the class, I played uh, a, video, uh, a video. So it's called the Allegory of Caves, a TED Ed uh, video. So watch it out. Maganda yung philosophical implications niya. And I, uh, I also encourage the class to watch this uh, video, A Conversation with Bertrand Russell in YouTube, which is an interview with uh, one of the greatest philosopher or mathematicians of the modern era, see Bertrand Russell. It was filmed in 1952. You can search it up in YouTube. It's about 30 minutes long. And if you have nothing to do and you like um, watching philosophical and uh, probably historical uh, documentaries, it's a must watch. And uh, if you guys want, you can submit a reaction paper about it and I can add it to your problem set scores. So um, what I'll do is uh, open... Uh, a submission bin in Canvas about uh, this reaction paper. So, lalagyan ko siya ng reaction paper, Russell. So, yun na lang yung title ko. And then, you can come up with um, with a couple of paragraphs, reaction paper, or kung gusto nyo, kung masyado kayong na-inspire ni, uh, ni Russell, uh, pwedeng two or three pages. So, it's up to you. Uh, babasahin ko talaga siya, don't worry. Um, pag wala akong magawa, talagang binabasa ko yung reactions sa mga students. But it would be a nice thing to reflect about this philosophical idea. Especially, we are, taught, we are mathematicians here, so uh, maganda rin na maging uh, open tayo or maging um, exposed tayo with this kind of philosophies. All right? And then, uh, I also decided over the weekend that uh, I'll, um, or hindi pala, over, overnight, now, I'll upload answer keys to uh, problem set 1.2 and 1.3. So I'll do that later today. So uh, uh, visit our Canvas answer keys page para kung gusto niyo ng copy ng answer key ng 1.2 and 1.3 para paleto dun sa mga students who might not be able to do online consultations. And then um, we also have um, problem set to looming. Uh, According to my schedule, our schedule in Canvas, it should be due on November 24th, 5 p.m. But I'll uh, and that's going to be next week. But I'll propose that we move it one week ahead, uh, one week uh, later. So going natin siya November 29th to uh, December 1. Okay, lang bayon. Hama ba? May uh, December 1 na bayon. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's move it one week uh, forward. So it would be on Monday, November 29th, 8 a.m. So it will be live on Canvas. And then the deadline would be December 1, right before midnight. Okay? So kasi yung coverage niya supposedly ay uh, axiomatic set theory, which is what we are trying to do right now. And then uh, unit 3, which is the algebra of sets na i-cover natin next week. So uh, I'll change that in Canvas later, but put that on your schedules, okay? Para hindi masyadong, uh, ah, para alam na yung pag prepare natin, okay? Then I think that's uh, all our housekeeping matters. And then let's now go to uh, our formal discussions. Now, last time we uh, we tried to actually, uh, we followed the Cantor's development of set theory. Sabi natin si Cantor, um, yeah. He normalized the concept of set theory by using three axioms. He has this uh, axiom of extensionality, axiom of um, abstraction, and there's a third axiom which we haven't discussed yet, on tawag sa kanya yung axiom of choice, but that's a very technical result, so we'll reserve the discussion of that later. And don't worry, the axiom of choice was retained in the new brand of uh, set theory that we will discuss, right? But putting our focus on the first two axioms, there's no big problem with the axiom of extension. It just says that the two sets are equal if and only if they have the same members, all right? Thus, the second axiom is quite problematic, the axiom of abstraction. Sabi nung axiom of uh, abstraction, um, isang set I completely characterized by a property P. So that means any set A can be written in the form set of all Xs such that p of x is true, all right? So I think sabi ng ab axiom of abstraction, if you have any set, you could, uh, we should be able to write it in this way. And vice versa, any object that can be written this way is considered as a set, okay? Now, with this axiom of abstraction, it allowed for 
having a set of this form, set A such that um, uh, set A is the set of all sets capital X such that X is not a member of itself, right? And this is the the set that uh, that Bertrand Russell used in order to uh, to prove that there is a contradiction or a paradox in Cantorian set theory. And this prompted mathematicians to scramble and try to uh, to fix this problem of uh, Cantorian set theory because uh, Cantorian set theory has uh, has formalized yung mga intuitive notions na ginagamit na dati ng mga mathematicians. So for 30 years, it flourished into a big theory subscribed to by uh, almost every mathematician. And yet, ito nga, earth-shattering yung example ni, uh, ni Bertrand Russell, right? And so, in the next few years, mathematicians tried to fix what is wrong with Cantorian set theory, basically the existence of Russell's paradox. And as we have mentioned last time, Ernst Sermelo uh, put the first attempt to fix this, and he proposed the first axiomatic set theory in 1908. And um, I think last time I told you that uh, Sermelo introduced six, pero... Um, Eight pala yung axioms na inintroduce niya. Nakalimutan ko yung dalawa na nasa susunod pa na modules. So, but yeah, Ernst Armello uh, brought forth additional axioms to try to fix Cantorian set theory. And then um, uh, some years after, uh, Abram uh, Frankel and Toraf Skolem added one new, um, one new Axiom, which is called the axiom scheme of replacement, putting the total of axioms in this new set theory to nine. So yung tatlong axioms ni uh, ni uh, ni Cantor na dagdagan siya, or actually naging uh, naging sham na siya, in order just to avoid Russell's paradox and to formalize some other things that Cantor did not uh, uh, formally define in his uh, set theory. And the result is called the zermelo frankel set theory. I forgot to research why Skolem was left out of the billing, but maybe that's another story. Hopefully, there's a YouTube video for that. Uh, okay, but essentially, the zermelo frankel or the ZF set theory or modern set theory, I tinray na tinray nila na tanggalen yung undesirable features ng uh, Cantorian set theory and at the same time retain all those that are desirable. So nangyari ngayon ay nagdagdag lang talaga ng axioms para ma-formalize yung, uh, yung set theory. Nagdagdag in the sense na mas dumami yung axioms pero medyo tuwinik nila yung uh, axiom of abstraction which caused some of the pro uh, which caused Russell's paradox, okay? Now, as uh, Cantorian set theory, the primitive notions of uh, the modern set theory or the zermelo frankel set theory ay membership pa rin ng isang set, okay? And the same thing, we usually denote sets by capital letters, small letters for objects of the set. Sets can also contain sets and so on. And uh, yung principal relations in ZF set theory is quite similar also to what Cantorian set theory uh, use. Ito pa rin yung apat na central uh, concepts about uh, set theory. Uh, membership to a set, equality of two sets, non-membership to a set, and non-equality between two sets. And still, we allow the notation P of X to be a statement about X, which uh, can be used as a characteristic or a defining uh, formula or a distinguishing characteristic for memberships to a set. Pero i-avoid natin yung existence ng Russell's, um, ng paradox ni Russell. Kaya medyo hihigpitan natin yung version natin ng axiom of abstraction ngayon involving the statement P about X. And this page lists uh, the uh, the axioms of ZF set theory. Pito. Ito siguro yung nakita ko kaya nasa isip ko. Pito lang. Pero may dalawa pa sa next page. So, sham yung axioms na titingnan natin. And hopefully today, we'll be able to uh, breeze through them one by one and then uh, reserve a more uh, a more technical discussion about the axiom of infinity and the axiom of choice in succeeding chapters, okay? But there are seven uh, axioms that are quite basic na hindi natin kailangan ng separate sections for them. The first one of these axioms, ZF1, or the axiom of existence, okay? Ang sinasabi lang ng axiom of existence, there exists a set which has no element, 
Okay, so merong set na walang laman, and we consider that to be a set. Okay, uh, and then um, intuitively, dapat isa lang yung set na walang laman, and we will prove it right after we uh, we state the second axiom, which is the axiom of extensionality. Now, the axiom of extensionality is exactly what Cantor broached. Ito rin yung equality between two sets if and only if uh, all members of the first set is in the second set and vice versa. So nothing new about ZF2 or the axiom of extensionality. Ito rin yung kay Cantor. Inadapt lang sa Zermela Frankel set theory. And with these two first axioms, we can prove that there exists only one set with no element. Or we can say that there exists one and only one element with no set, uh, with no element. Okay, isa lang yung empty set. Kaya papangalanan natin siyang empty set with the article the. Ibig sabihin siya ay unique. Nag-iisa lamang yung set na walang laman at siya yung tinatawag natin na empty set. At ang notation niya ay parang zero tapos may slash. So that's what we denote the empty set with. Okay. Now let's try to prove it. So there exists one and only one set with no element. So first is proof by ex, uh, proof of existence. Okay. Now if we will try to prove that, well, madali lang kasi i, uh, i magapi lang ako sa ZF1. So proof uh, such a set exists, such a set with no element exists by the axiom of uh, existence or by ZF1, okay? So, kailangan lang talaga nating i-prove ay, uh, ay uniqueness, right? Kasi sabi niya ay, there is uh, only one set with no element. Alam natin nag exist may isang, at least isang element, na wal, ah, wal, may isang set na walang laman by ZF1. Gusto lang natin ipakita na nag-iisa siya. And the usual proof is to either show that if there is another set with no element, that must be equal to the original set that we know. And the other one is ipakita na, or do a contradiction, a proof by contradiction. Suppose there is another set with no element and prove that and derive a contradiction from that. Okay. Now, um, so we can, siguro uh, direct proof yung gawin ko, let phi1 and phi2 be such sets. So, ibig sabihin, set sila na walang laman. And let's try to prove that phi1 is equal to phi2. Okay? Now, sabi nga natin, para mag-prove ng equality ng sets, um, kailangan natin ipakita na yung, is, yung element ng first set ay element din ng pangalawa and vice versa. So, I will consider an X element of phi1. All right? Now, what can you say about this statement, X element of phi1? So this statement is actually false, right? Bakit siya false? False siya kasi wala namang element si phi1. Kasi nga, empty nga siya. So ibig sabihin, ito ay false statement and a false antecedent can imply anything and yet the implication or the compound proposition will be true, remember? So kung ito yung antecedent na gagamitin ko ay false, Pwede ako mag-imbento ng, uh, ng kahit anong conclusion na, na gusto ko, right? And then the implication will still be true. So I can say that X is an element of phi2, right? So again, this, uh, this uh, uh, conditional statement is a false antecedent implying a false uh, conclusion, which is true. Right, tautology yon, or yun yung truth, uh, uh, yun yung truth value ng compound proposition na ito. False implying false is true. All right. Tapos sa tuwing tinatawag natin na vacuous proof, vacuous. Uh -huh. Okay. So yung vacuous proofs or vacuous statements, usually these are conditional statements with a false uh, antecedent. So kung yung false antecedent Pwede kang magdagdag sa kanya ng kahit anong consequent. And then the, the, the implication will still be true. Alright? So yun yung ginamit kong proof dito na medyo mukhang pandaraya. Pero logically it is uh, valid, right? Kasi false implying false is still true. Or false implying true 
is still true. So I don't care whether this guy is true or false. I can just make anything up and then the implication will still be true. OK, so but what we have shown here is that. Uh, kung laman siya ni phi 1, dapat laman din siya ni phi 2. And similarly, using the same vacuous argument, if I will assume that X is in phi 2, that is a false antecedent, I can put any uh, any consequent, right? Whether it that could be uh, that is true or false. So I can just make up the uh, the desired conclusion here and say that X is element of phi 1, okay? Again, this is false statement, implying false statement, because it's a phi 1, it's a phi 2, pareha silang walang laman, false implying false, that is a true uh, conditional statement, and so this is uh, vacuously true, all right? Vacuously, or it is true by default, all right? By logical default, all right? So, but the nice thing about this choice of consequence, all right? Now, pakita na natin na pag element siya ni phi 1, magpa-follow na element siya ng phi 2. Kung element siya ni phi 2, magpa-follow na element siya ni phi 1. Therefore, phi 1 and phi 2 shares the same elements. So, therefore, we can say that phi 1 is equal to phi 2. That is, there exists a unique set with no element. Okay? Nag-iisa lang yung empty set. Kaya pag uh, nagre-refer tayo sa empty set, ang article natin ay da. Kasi nag-iisa lang yung set na walang laman. And we call it the empty set or the null set. Okay? Another name for the empty set. Okay? And you see that meron na tayong tal uh, meron na kagad tayong result using only the first two axioms in ZF set theory. Okay? Now, another nice result uh, that can be proved easily using uh, the ZF2 is theorem 1.2.5. It gives us a nice uh, characteristic or three characteristics of equality of sets, okay? Now, for any sets A, B, and C, then equality of sets possesses three nice properties. First is reflexive. Uh, set equality is reflexive, meaning a set is equal to itself. So it could easily be proven using ZF2. Uh, property two, if A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. So it doesn't matter which comes first in, uh, in an equation. All right, pwede nating balik tarin. Yung, or a flip yung isang equation. And this is called the symmetric property or the symmetry of equality. And the third is the transitivity of equality. If A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. All right? And the proof is uh, quite straightforward kasi kung si A ay equal kay B, so ibig sabihin lahat ng laman ni B ay na kay A and vice versa. Si B ay equal kay C, so lahat ng element ni B ay na kay C at lahat ng element ni C ay na kay B by ZF2. And so, since uh, A and C have the same members as B, then they themselves must have the same members, again, by ZF2. And then you can conclude that A must be equal to C. Okay. Now, with these three properties, we can say that equality is an equivalence relation. And we will see later, ano nga ba yung ibig sabihin ng pagiging equivalence relation or what are the consequences of being an equivalence relation? Para kasi maging equivalence relation ang isang relationship between two objects, it must be reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. And here in Theorem 5, we have shown that equality of sets is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. So, um, isa siyang magandang example ng equivalence relation which is a very fundamental type of relation in set theory or in all of mathematics. But we are getting ahead of ourselves there. So, i uh, relish muna natin itong nice property of set theory for the sake of the current discussion. Okay? Now, moving on to the third uh, action. All right. Ito yung ipinalit ni uh, Zermelo, Frankel, and Squalem dun sa this is the principle of abstraction ni Cantor, okay? And this is a more subdued or a more uh, restrictive statement of uh, the principle of abstraction. Sabi ng principle of abstraction, pag meron kang property P of X, it will give us a set. 
and a set always has a property p about x that can only be satisfied by its members. Okay. Pero medyo twinik nila to a little bit and put some restriction to it. Tingnan natin kung ano yung nangyari. Now, yung bagong uh, axiom na to ay tinawag nila na axiom schema of subsets. Okay? Let's see what it says. So, it says, uh, consider a property P about X. All right? Then, for a set A, there exists a set capital B. So, dalawa na yung sets na pinag-uusapan natin dito. Kaya, uh, kay principle of abstraction, isang set lang at saka isang property. So, na lahat ng elements ni A ay, naka, ay nasasatisfy si property P. At tanging mga elements lang ni A yung nakakasatisfy ng property P. Okay? In this case, in the axioms, axioms schema of subsets, may dalawang sets, si A at saka si B. Okay? So, ano yung sinasabi nila? Um, for any element of, uh, for any object X, X will be a subset uh, will be an element of B if and only if X is in A and property P holds. So dalawa na ngayon yung uh, requirements para maging element ng set B. Dapat una element siya ni capital A so you can think of capital A as something larger than uh, set B, all right? So para maging member ka ni capital B dapat member ka dapat ni A at saka dapat na sa satisfy mo yung property P which characterizes the elements of B. So dalawa na yung requirement. Okay? Now, before we proceed, we would like to prove theorem 6 which says na unique yung set B that is guaranteed by the axiom scheme of subsets, okay? Now, a usual thing, um uh, Proof of uniqueness to, no? So, usual thing. Let's consider another set B or another set B prime that has the same characteristic, okay? So, we say consider another set, say uh, B prime, such that X is an element of B prime if and only if X is in A and P about X is true. Right? So, consider ko, kunwari, aside from capital B, may isa pang set that satisfies the uh, conclusion of the axiom schema. Na si X ay element ng other set na yon tinawag kong B prime, if and only if X is in A and P about X is true. Now, we want to show that B is also equal to B prime, or B prime is equal to B. Okay? Now, this is quite easy because... Uh, if x is in b prime, that means that x is in a and p of x is true, all right? But since the object x satisfies these two things, which is also a requirement to or and uh, not just a requirement, but is a sufficient condition for an object to be in set b, then we can say that x is an element of capital uh, is an element of B. Kasi ito rin yung criterion natin para maging member ka ni B. Tama? And then you can show the converse. Kung si X ay element ni B, by definition, sa axiom schema, ang X ay element ni A and P of X is true. But with the definition of B prime, that is tantamount to being an element of B prime. So ibig sabihin, hindi lang pala forward arrows yung meron ako dito, Conditional, by conditional pala itong mga to. Because if I start at X element of B prime, I'll go here by definition of B prime. And then by definition of B, it will follow that X element of B. And then I'll just reverse the roles. I'm going to start with this guy. By definition of elements of B, this is true. And by definition of elements of B prime, this will follow. And hence, the double-headed arrows here. So, pwedeng kapag ka reversible pala yung proof nyo, pwedeng yung if and only if statement ma-prove nyo in one go. As long as, as you are sure that these are by conditionals. And essentially, this tells us that B is equal to B prime by the axiom of extensionality ZF2. And that ends the proof. Okay? Now, this new version of... Uh, 
the principle of abstraction, hindi na nga siya principle of abstraction, medyo ano na siya, uh, upgraded version or more restrictive version. This, this allows the existence of Russell's paradox. And let's see why. Okay? So, kunwari, balikan natin yung uh, balikan natin yung uh, element, uh, yung set dun sa, uh, dun sa paradox ni Russell. Alright? So, think, pakita natin na hindi na siya pwedeng mag-exist using ZF3. Alright? So, let's consider the set, say, uh, B to be the set of all uh, sets capital X such that capital X is in capital A and X is not a member of capital X. Alright? So, ito yung uh, naging problema ng Cantorian set theory. Remember, the set of all X's such that X doesn't contain itself. All right? Now, pag finraise ko siya, dun sa requirement ng ZF3, dapat ganito yung itsura niya. Merong larger set from which we are selecting the members of capital B. Kasi sabi natin, ang criteria natin ngayon para sa elements ni uh, capital B or ng kahit anong set Hindi lamang si property P about X, pero dapat nagbe-belong siya sa isang mas malaking set. Okay? So if we will translate uh, or if we will retrofit uh, Russell's paradox or Russell's set in the context of ZF3, ganito dapat yung itsura niya. Okay? Now, we had the problem last time determining whether the set B is an element of B or not. Yung naging problema natin dun sa Cantorian set theory, hindi tayo makapag-decide kung si B ba ay laman ni capital B. And that uh, that quandary is now avoided in ZF3. Because here we can prove that B is not an element of... Uh, um, that B cannot be an element of itself, all right? Uh, or both of them will lead to contradictions. So essentially what I'll try to prove here is that capital B is not a member of A, therefore making it not qualified to a member of uh, to be a member of itself. So consequent nito, si B ay hindi pwedeng maging element ng sarili niya. And this is impossible to decide dun sa Cantorian set theory, right? So nakita natin last time, sa Cantorian set theory, hindi tayo makapag-decide Kung si B ay element ba ni B or si B hindi element ni B. Okay? Now, in ZF3, we can say for certain that B is not a member of itself. And we can do that by showing that B is uh, or B is not an element of capital A. Hindi na satisfy ni B yung requirements para maging element ni capital A. Okay? And let's see why. And makikita nyo na, okay, that's why kailangan ko yung ZF3. Kasi yung ZF3, siya yung nag-introduce nung second condition para maging element ng isang set. And that helped us prove that B is not an element of B. Kasi nga, hindi masasatisfy ni capital B yung unang requirement na nadagdag lamang ni ZF3. Mula dun sa principle of abstraction. Okay? So let's try to prove it that B is not an element of capital A. Now, the proof of this claim can be broken down into two cases. Case one, si B kunwari ay element ni si B. Okay, so kung si B ay element ni B, then that will imply that B is not an element of B, which is a contradiction. Okay? Alright, that's clear. Nakita na rin natin to sa case nung uh, nung uh, dun sa case ni uh, dun sa case nung uh, Russell's paradox, tama? And in case 2, actually bakit nga ba ako nagkaroon ng cases na to? Nagkaroon ako ng cases na to dahil um, I assume ko by contradiction that B is an element of A. Hold on, parang may kulang ako. Okay. Tama, nakalimutan kong i-assume yung suppose for the sake of contradiction. I suppose for sake of contradiction that B is an element of A. Okay. 
And then if B is an element of A, then there are two cases. B is in B or B is not in B. Okay. Now, napakita natin, may contradiction pag in natin na si B ay element ni B. Now, in our second case, I will assume that B is not in B. Okay. But this is a contradiction because if B is not in B, then that means B must be an element of B. Kasi laman ni B lahat ng sets na hindi nila laman yung sarili nila. Sabi natin dito, kunwari, si B hindi niya laman yung sarili niya, so dapat laman niya yung sarili niya, which is another contradiction. But the nice thing about this, it looks like just a repeat of uh, Russell's paradox. Pero ang kagandahan dito, meron tayong underlying assumption that B is an element of A. Okay? So ibig sabihin, kung si B ay element ni A, posible siyang maging element ni capital B kasi masasatisfy niya yung first condition. There are two cases. Either it satisfies the second condition or not. But we see that both uh, cases is a contradiction. So therefore, hindi dapat maging element ni B, uh, maging element ni A si B, kasi otherwise, babalik tayo sa Russell's paradox. So therefore, we must accept the fact that B is not an element of capital A. And since hindi siya element ni capital A, walang chance na maging element siya ni capital B. Okay? Kasi nga, ang requirement Para maging element ni capital B, dapat in the first place, element muna siya ni capital A. Pero si B, wala siya kay capital A. Wala siya sa mga choices para maging candidates, ng, uh, maging element ng sarili niya. So that means uh, that ends the proof and that closes the door for the existence of another Russell paradox in ZF, uh, in the zermela frankel set theory. Okay? Now, any questions, guys? Uh, yes, uh, Mary? Medyo nahihilo po ko dyan sa part na yun. Okay lang po ba kung pwede yung paki-apply po siya dun sa Barber's Paradox para po mas ma-absorb? Okay. So, ngayon ay hindi na... Okay, so pwede nga natin isang contextualize sa Russell's Paradox. Nice uh, nice question, uh, Mary. So, pwede ngayon ang tingnan natin ay... Diba sabi dati sa, Ras, uh, sa, sa Barber's Paradox ay ganito. Meron kang isang island. So island yan. Tapos sabi nung, uh, sabi nung council ng island, meron akong barber sa loob ng island. Ang pwede niya lang i-shave ay yung mga tao na hindi kayang i-shave yung sarili niya. So andito yung persons. who can't shave themselves. Okay. Sabi nung uh, sabi nung nung kwento ay uh, nung Barber's Paradox, dun sa island, ang kaya lang i-shave ni Barber ay lahat ng hindi kaya ang pwede niya lang i-shave o ang sinishave niya lang ay yung mga hindi kayang i-shave yung sarili niya o yung mga hindi nagsha-shave ng sarili nila. So naging question ngayon, sinishave ba ni Barber yung sarili niya or hindi? Kasi kung sinishave niya yung sarili niya, ibig sabihin kaya niyang ishave yung sarili niya, so hindi niya dapat ishave yung sarili niya. Tama? Tapos kung hindi naman niya sinishave yung sarili niya, ibig sabihin dapat ishave niya yung sarili niya. So dapat sinishave niya yung sarili niya. So walang hindi alam ni Barber yung gagawin niya. Dito sa ZF3, pinabaan yung ah, dinagdagan ng isang choice. Ah, dinagdagan ng isa pang condition kung sino lang ba yung mga isa-shave ni Barber. So, pwedeng ang, ang sabihin ng council, si Barber, tanggalin ko siya, hindi siya citizen ng village. Tapos ang statement ngayon ng Barber's Paradox ay, ang kaya lang ishave, ang pwede lang ishave ni Barber ay yung citizens ng island na hindi kayang i-shave yung sarili niya. So, may dalawang condition. Dapat member siya ng bigger set Tapos dapat hindi niya kayang i-shave yung sarili niya. Ito yung property P about X. Tapos yung B, X being an element of A na, re na re require ng ZF3, dapat member siya or citizen siya ng island. Tapos pag tinanggal ko si Barber, napakita natin dito sa proof na to na si Barber ay hindi citizen ng island. Hindi siya citizen ni capital A. 
So, ibig sabihin, hindi siya kasama dun sa choices ng pwedeng ishave ng barber or ng pwede niyang ishave. Kasi nga, ang bagong condition ngayon nung council, kailangan kasi nila mag-comply dun sa constitution which is ZF3, alright? Dapat dalawa yung criteria para mag-apply yung membership dun sa set ng shave niya. Una, dapat citizen ka nung island, X and element of A, and second, property P about X, hindi mo dapat kayang ishave yung sarili mo. So, by what we have proven, si Barber, which is the distinguishing characteristic of the set, ay dapat hindi citizen ng island. Dahil hindi siya citizen ng island, automatic kagad na hindi niya kayang ishave yung um, hindi siya kasama dun sa options o dun sa conditions na ishave niya yung sarili niya or hindi. So, there is now no question whether the barber can shave himself or not. Kasi wala siya dun sa consideration. So yung membership dun sa set of all people that the barber can shave ay restricted dun sa mga citizens ng island. Dahil si barber, hindi siya citizen ng island, so ibig sabihin, hindi niya kayang ishave yung sarili niya. For sure. Alright? Uh, does that make more sense? Dahil pala inuna ko to, no? Parang mas madali siyang matandaan. Alright? Uh, tapos ibabalik mo naman siya sa konsepto ng constitution, yung law na pinasa ng council na ang pwede mo lang ishave ay yung mga citizens namin. That's the additional condition para mawala yung paradox na hindi kayang ishave yung sarili niya. And the barber, as we have proven, cannot be, an, uh, cannot be a citizen of the island. So the constitution or that law cannot apply to him. Okay? Oh, that's a nice thing. Ngayon ko lang na-realize na pwede ko siyang i-concept ulit. So meron akong bagong natutunan ngayon. Pwede ko siyang gamitin sa next sem ng pagtuturo ng 101. At hopefully, hindi kayo yung mga sudyante ko dun ulit. Alright? Now, uh, I, need to, uh, I need to borrow some more minutes because I was really hoping to finish all actions today uh, para medyo maka-move on tayo. Pag-philosophical talaga yung discussion, medyo natatagalan ako. Alright? But essentially here, um, the uh, the third axiom that we have, the axiom scheme of subset, introduced another term, which is the concept of being a subset. Okay. Now we say that a set B is a subset of A, written this way. So this is read as B is a subset of A, if and only if X is an element of B implies X is an element of A. So, kaya nating i-prove by definition that B is a subset of A. Kung mapapakita natin na kapag ka element siya ni B, magfa-follow na element siya ni A. So, in Venn diagrams, so kung gagawa tayo ng picture sa kanya, yung pagiging subset ay ito. Si set A yung mas malaking set, si set B yung mas maliit. Kasi nga ang condition, lahat dapat ng element ni B ay nasa loob ni capital A. So in this case, we say B is a subset of set A. If it so happened that your illustration looks like this, if this is the set A, this is the set B, we say that B is not a subset of capital A because we can find some elements of B that are not members of capital A. So we'll be able to find examples of elements of B implying X is not an element of A. So, hindi siya subset. Dapat pag subset siya, nasa loob siya ng mas malaking set. Okay? Now, alternatively, if B is a subset of A, we can also say that A is a superset of B, written this way. A superset of B. Okay? Parang binaliktad lang. Tandaan nyo lang yung opening ng bunganga, ng notation para kay subset, ay nakanganga dun sa mas malaking set. Alright? So, yung mas malaking set, yun yung parang kakainin nitong symbol na to. Alright? Now, here are some properties of um, of uh, subsets. The subset relation is, um, is uh, reflexive. A is a subset of itself. So, this shows that merong isang element, at least isang element ang isang, ah, may isang may at least isang subset ang isang set, which is itself. Alright? Kasi subset ng isang set ang sarili niya. 
Second is there's an anti-symmetry uh, property for subsets. If A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, it follows that A is equal to B. All right? At the anti-symmetry na property ng subset relation. Okay. So this is a nice thing and pwede natin tong gamitin pag prove ng equality. Pag napakita natin na si set A ay subset ni B, tapos ang B ay subset ni A, then by theorem 1.2 Point 10, or simply the anti-symmetry property of subsets, we can say that A is equal to B. So kindly remember that because this is basically uh, our go-to way on how to prove equality of sets. We want to show that one is a subset of the other and vice versa. Okay. And then third is the transitivity property. If A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, therefore A is a subset of C. And this is best illustrated using, again, a Venn diagram, okay? So Venn diagram yung ginagamit natin to get an intuition of how set relations are, okay? Una, si A daw ay subset ni B. So dapat si A nasa loob ni B. So ito si B. Tapos, ah, sorry, balik, uh, hold on. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Mas malaki si B. So dapat ito si A. All right? And then it says here that B is a subset of C. B is a subset of C. So, ibig sabihin si C, mas malaki kay B. All right? Ito dapat si C. And you see that obviously, A must belong to C because A is here and it lies entirely inside the domain of C. So, it makes sense uh, that transitivity holds for subsets. Okay. So uh, we will forgo the formal proof of this. Hopefully you have seen uh, the proof of this in AMAT 19 or MATH 20. So skip na lang muna natin siya for now. If you have some questions about these proofs, uh, just uh, uh, send me an email or a chat. Uh, tapos discuss na lang natin doon. But try it and then let me let me know what happens. Okay. Now, uh, We characterize another uh, or a special type of subset and tawag sa kanya ay proper subset. Ang isang set, B, ay proper subset ni A, denoted this way, but I usually prefer writing proper subsets this way. B is a proper subset of A. If and only if, B is a subset of A, pero si B hindi equal kay A. Kasi sabi nga natin, ang isang set ay subset ng sarili niya. Pero kapag ka meron kang subset, na hindi equal dun sa mas malaking set, then that is called a proper subset. So, kaya parang nilagyan niya ng cross yung equality rito. Kasi yung proper subset ay subset na hindi equal dun sa superset. Okay? Uh, usually, I, more, uh, I prefer this more. Uh, yung B subset lang ni A na walang equality sa ilalim to mean proper subset. Okay? So, meaning... All elements of B are in A, but there are elements of A that are not in B. Okay? And then, kung yun yung proper subset, i-define naman natin yung improper subset. Improper subset siya kung hindi siya proper subset. Okay? So, set B is an improper subset even only if B is equal to A. So meron lamang, according sa ating definition, isang improper subset ang isang set. At yun ay yung sarili niya. Okay? Now, theorem 14 is another statement that is proven vacuously that the empty set is always a subset of any other set. Okay? So sinasabi niya lang ay ito. Meron na tayong pangalawang sure na subset ng kahit anong set. Remember, subset ng isang set ang sarili niya. And pangalawa, by theorem 14, ang empty set ay subset ng kahit na anong set. Alright? Now, hindi pala lahat ng sets may dalawang subsets. Lahat ng non-empty sets ay may at least dalawang subsets. The empty set and itself. Si empty set kasi, isa lang yung subset niya, which is yung sarili niya. Alright? Now, theorem 14 is proven using a vacuous argument. So, makita nyo dito, remember? Ang pagiging subset x element of A implies x element of B. Ibig sabihin si A ay subset ni B. 
So kung kukunin ko si x element of the empty set, false yan. So pwede ko siyang lagyan ng kahit anong consequent. Pwede kong sabihin x is an element of a. And I want to use this x element of a kasi kapag ka totoo tong implication na to, that's the very definition of being a subset. Okay? So again, I relied on a vacuous argument showing that by default, since the empty set doesn't have an element, assuming that x is an element of the empty set is false and can be given any consequent. In particular, we're going to choose that consequent to be x element of a. And this implication here is the very definition of being a subset. All right? Now, moving on. Sorry, medyo minamadali ko na siya. Um, Let's go to uh, ZF4, the axiom of pairing. So the axiom of pairing just says that there is a set C na ang laman niya lang ay dalawa, si A at saka si B. So if you have two sets A and B, all right, there exists a set capital C such that the members of, of uh, capital C satisfies the following properties. So ito yung... Nasa axiom of extension, ah, sorry, axiom of uh, scheme of subsets, x element of C. Tas ito yung property P about x. Para maging element ka ni capital C, dapat si x ay element ni capital A, ah, si x ay equal kay capital A, or si x ay equal kay capital B. So here, from this statement, we can deduce that the set C is just a set uh, containing A and B. So parang pwede nating i-pair ang kahit na anong dalawang sets to be a member of another set C. Uh, it seems that it is very uh, obvious. Bakit pa siya kailangan sabihin? Uh, kailangan ko siya para ma-define ma ang cross product later. So the axiom of pairing is important in that way. And remember, that's not a surprise because axioms are statements that are usually self-evident and are assumed or stated na hindi kailangan ng proof either kasi napaka-obvious nila, or second, they are uh, just assumed to be true for the sake of what is to follow. Okay? And then you can show that this set C is unique by using ZF2. But more on the action of pairing later, pagka kailangan ko na siyang gamitin para ma-define yung cross product. Now, let's go to ZF5. So for any set S, so think of S as a collection of sets, all right? So si S, family or collection siya ng sets. For any collection of sets, there exists a set U such that X will become an element of U if and only if X is in A for some A in capital S. So ang mga members ni capital U ay yung mga Xs na element ng isang laman ni capital S. Okay? So, uh, makikita nyo later, pag dinefine natin yung union, ano yung ibig sabihin ng axiom of union. Pero yung axiom of union, ginagarantee niya lang na merong isang set na, na naglalaman ng lahat ng elements ng mga sets na nandun sa family S. Okay? So, that's the axiom of union. And it will be unique. It will be shown to be unique later. Now, the sixth axiom is the axiom of the power set. So again, for any family of sets, so si S, ang laman niya uli ay mga sets uli, there exists another set, capital P, such that X is in P if and only if X is a subset of S. All right? So, ang mga laman ni set P ay yung mga subsets ni set S. Actually, hindi pala dito family, hindi necessary na family of set C, capital S. So, si set P, ang laman niya lamang ay yung mga subsets ni capital S. Alright? So, ang tawag natin, dun sa set ng laman ay lahat ng subsets ng isang set ay yung power set. Okay? So the power set of a set is the set of all subsets of that set. And it is denoted by curly P of S. So for instance, if we look at illustration 19, 
consider natin na set S ay 135. If you want to take the power set of this set, kukunin lang natin lahat ng subsets ni capital S. Ano nga ba yung subsets? Sila yung set na ang laman ay mga members ni capital S. Alright? So sila yung mga set na nasa loob ng set S. So, pwede niyo siyang systematically piliin, pero kunin niyo lang, make sure that you include all subsets of capital S. So, ano ba yung mga subsets ni capital S? Again, for sure, we know two. We know the empty set is a subset of S, and the set S itself is a subset of S. So, meron na kagad siyang dalawang members. Okay? Now, kailangan lahat ng subsets ay nasa power set. So, ang laman ng power set ay mga sets na subset ni capital S. So, ibig sabihin si capital S, dahil tatlo yung laman niya, meron siya dapat subsets or proper subsets na tigi isa lang yung laman. Okay? So, kunin ko lahat ng subsets na tigi, tigi isa lang yung laman. Set containing 1, set containing 3, and set containing 5. And then, si capital S, meron din siyang mga proper subsets na dalawa lang yung laman. Set containing 1, 3. So, ito yung kukunin ko. Silang dalawa yung magkasama. Tapos si 1 and 5, sila yung susunod na magkasama. Tapos ano pa yung set na dalawa lang yung laman. Hindi ko pa napapag-partner si 1 at saka, uh, sorry. Tapos na pala si 1 at 5. Si uh, 3 at saka si 5, hindi pa natin napag-partner. Sila yung huling set na dalawa yung laman. Alright? And then si S, tatlo yung laman. So, ibig sabihin, isa lang yung subset niya na tatlo yung laman, which is itself. So, this set here, containing eight sets, is the power set of the set S. Kasi laman niya, lahat ng mga sets na subsets ni capital S. Now, I would like to end at least with a proof of... Uh, or maybe let's tackle the proof next time. Uh, kasi... Uh, super overtime na. So, uh, I'll prove theorem 23 next time that the set uh, of n elements is 2 to the n elements. So, ang power set ng isang set na may n na laman ay 2 to the power n. Okay? Kagamitin natin yung PMI para ma-prove ito. Okay? Now, let me just read the other axioms. Uh, the next axiom is the axiom of infinity. Uh, we will discuss ZF7 later when we go into infinite sets. But it just says that there exists a set capital A such that the empty set is in capital A n. Kung si x ay laman ni A, magpa-follow na yung x union set containing x ay element ni A. It's quite difficult to go into the nitty-gritty of the axiom of infinity at this point kasi kailangan natin yung konsepto ng union which we haven't discussed yet except on the uh, statement of the axiom of union. Pero let's, uh, let's see later why the axiom of infinity allows for sets to have infinitely many members. Now, the eighth axiom is the axiom scheme of replacement. This axiom ay parang extension lamang ng axiom of scheme of subsets, except that in this particular case, meron, meron tayong isang property P about the elements X and Y. Okay? So, nadagdagan lamang yung property P ng dalawa. So, it says that this property is that for every x, there exists a unique y for which p of x, y holds. And it guarantees the existence of a set capital B such that for every x in A, there is a y in B for which p of x, y holds. So makita nyo para talagang extension lamang siya ng, ng axiom of schema of subsets. Okay? Now, uh, we can discuss more about its nitty-gritty when needed later. Um, pero mahalaga lang i-state natin siya for today. And then the last one, nagawa na natin tong remark 25 kanina. The last one is the axiom of choice, which is another retained axiom from Cantorian set theory. Okay? So ang sabi ng axiom of choice, nandito yung formal statement, pero yung gist niya ay ganito. Meron akong function f whose domain is the collection of non-empty subsets of A. So parang si F, function siya mula sa power set ni A, papunta sa elements ni, elements ni A. Nang idea rito ay, this function, okay, 
this function f chooses a representative from subsets of A. So, I'm going ng subset ni A. Suppose A1 is a subset of A. Tapos, mula kay, so, ito si A. Tapos, ito si A1. Mula kay A1, pipili ako ng isang member. So, halimbawa siya si, uh, yung member na yon siya yung F of A1. Tapos, kung may isa pa akong subset, halimbawa, ito si A2, pipili ako ng isang element kay A2, siya yung function value ni A2. So, it says here that we can define a function, okay, na ang input niya ay lahat ng mga subsets ni capital A, tapos ang function value niya ay isang element ni capital A. So basically, it gives us an avenue on how to choose a member or a representative from subsets of capital A. And the action of choice is a very powerful result na ginagamit especially for, uh, for real analysis and uh, even modern algebra. So this is a very technical result and it requires a more detailed explanation. But basically for now, you can think of the axiom of choice as a guarantee that we can always define a function that chooses for us an element of a subset of a particular set. So pag binigyan kita ng subset, pwede kang pumili ng kahit na anong element ng subset na yon to be the function value under a mapping F. So parang pwede kang mag-raffle. Pipili ka ng element ni A1, pipili ka ng element ni A2, element ni A3, and they will be the representatives or the function values of that set. And again, this is a very technical result which will require a different discussion. Okay? Now, um, any questions? Sorry, medyo minadali ko siya. Gusto ko na talaga siyang matapos para makaabot tayo dun sa uh, coverage ng problem set. But all of these are mere uh, statements or explanations of these axioms, all right? And we will see these axioms later whenever we are needing them. Kasi lalo na ngayon, there's no big point in dwelling on these axioms aside from uh, trying to see what they're trying to say and how they are stated and what are their immediate consequences. Their, more, their other consequences will be defined or will be explained uh, whenever needed or whenever... Uh, whenever we encounter things na kailangan na sila. All right? So I think we'll end here. Sorry, I'm three minutes over over time. So uh, any uh, pahabal na questions? Oh, yes. Uh, Victor, question? Sir? Um, yes. Doon sa ZF2, sir, yung sa uh -huh. 1.2.5. All right. That part only applies a form na equality. 1.2.5. Uh, for now, yes. Sa equality siya muna. Sa subset, hindi siya nag apply right? Kasi uh, hindi symmetric yung subset. Kasi kapag ka si A, uh, kapag ka si A ay subset ni B, hindi nagpa-follow na si B ay subset ni A. All right, so hindi to nagfa-follow usually. So um, equality lang yung reflexive, symmetric, and transitive so far. Tapos yung subset nakita natin reflexive siya. Hindi siya symmetric pero anti-symmetric siya. Tapos transitive siya. And then in later uh, discussions, we will uh, we will meet other relations aside from equality na reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. One example is divisibility. So, sir, sa, ano, sa elemental, sir? Oh, sa element, uh, hindi rin siya totoo kasi hindi reflexive in general yung pagiging element. Kasi x, si x ba ay element ng sarili niya? Uh, kung si x ay isang object lamang, definitely hindi siya element ng sarili niya kasi hindi siya set. Tapos nakita natin na Hindi pwede si element ay maging laman niya ng sarili niya. All right? So this cannot also be true by ZF uh, by ZF3. So hindi reflexive yung pagiging element. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. So yeah, uh, good question. But later, uh, being reflexive, symmetric, and transitive will be found out to be a very nice property. So we will meet other relations aside from equality 
na nasa satisfy tong tatlong bagay na to. A quick example ay divisibility. So you can try na uh, later or try on your own na ipakita na yung yung, uh, yung divisibility ay reflexive symmetric at transitive. Pero gagawin din natin siya later when we go to equivalence relation. All right? Uh, other questions? Okay, if there are none, then thank you guys for joining me today and uh, bearing with me kahit over overtime na. So please enjoy the rest of the day and let's see each other again on Thursday for a brand new module. Bye guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.